Hello, welcome to my channel. Enjoy the video. So Dr. Angwa has an extensive background, but I can tell you he's a primary doctor. <laughs> and I can tell you that he's a father and I can tell you that he's a Christian. I think those are the big categories I'll put him in, but I'll, I'll have him introduce himself. Dr. Angwa, welcome to Masterpiece. We are excited to have you. In your own words, who is Dr. Angwa? Thank you very much for having me. I'm really excited, you know, to be with you, join the conversation today. Um, my name is Daniel Amoa, and I'm a primary care physician here in Florida. I am from Ghana, and uh, if you will permit me, yeah. you know, a few minutes to tell you, you know, a few things about myself. Now, first, I would like to, today discussion, we're going to be talking about a few things concerning how we can we program our mind, right? Mm -hmm. So I want to ask you, um, if anyone is here or anyone who has joined us, do yeah. you by chance know anyone who tried at the beginning of the year or last year and they set goals, wonderful goals, they were so excited, they wanted to lose weight or want to go to gym, all right, and exercise. Mm -hmm. And yet a few weeks, you know, after they started, they stopped. <laughs> if you know anyone, by the way, I'm not talking about the person next to you, all right? All yourself. <laughs> I'm talking about you, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, we have all experienced, you know, that before. So we'll be talking about that. But yeah, so, you know, permit me a few minutes to share with you. Uh, so I grew up in Ghana. Mm. And growing up in Ghana, my father had two wives. Mm. My mother and his second wife. And we all mm. live in the household, the same household. My father had 15 children. In addition wow. to that, he also had a lot of other children, nephews, nieces, you know, uh, grandchildren that he was taking care of. Now, of all the children, for well, somehow, I was the one who was always got into trouble. Hmm. I was always in trouble. I wasn't good. I wasn't good at school. I wasn't good at home. All right. Mm -hmm. I would collect money as if I was going to school and I'll go and ride bicycle, right? <laughs> and this happened. Now, I was always fighting at school and always got into trouble. My twin sister, Diana, she was the opposite. Mm -hmm. She was so organized. She would do her homework. She was good at school. So you can see the contrast, all right? Right. So this went on. I remember one time, I was in grade five, one 11 years or so. I fought with someone and that was in public school, all right? I fought with someone and after the fight, I actually went ahead and broke the person, you know, a chair into pieces. Now the school teacher wanted to punish me and, and I ran away. So my, anytime I got into trouble, my twin sister would come and inform my parents. Now I had an older brother who was 13 years older than me, Big Joe. Mm -hmm. The following day, he took me to the school, actually in front of the whole school, he spanked me, you know, what we call canes. He gave me canes. I mean, that was very embarrassing. <laughs> now, all this why I wanted to become a doctor. Wow. I wanted to become a doctor, all right? But I just wasn't good. so. When we were going to the sixth grade, my sister, my twin sister, you know, wanted to go to a private school. He told my parents they took her to private school. And I said, I'm not going, I'm staying here. Why? Because of course, there wouldn't be anybody to report me if I did anything wrong. Now, fast forward, I was about 15 years, 14, 15 years. I decided to write common entrance examination to go to secondary school. For those of you who, is not aware of Ghana system. Those days you have to write an entrance examination to go to mm -hmm. you know, high school. High school wasn't for everybody. Now, I wrote the examination and of course I failed because I just didn't know, I just wasn't good. Yeah, the following year, I had to write the exams again. And at that time I was about 15 years, almost three or four years older than the average you know, a student at that time. And I barely made the exam, you know, made the you know, exams. I barely passed. I got 196. Mm. And that is the lowest mark that I have ever seen. I mean, people were getting 300, 
all right? Uh -huh. So of course, I didn't get a chance to go into my first, second or third choice school. Mm -hmm. So my brother, Big Joe, took me to a school in Ghana, a village school somewhere in Ashanti region. Now, I was there for two years. You get up in the morning, most of the time, you will not get, you know, water. So you had to walk almost half a mile to the stream, fetch one water for yourself, one for your senior, and sometimes mm -hmm. one for the pantry before you start class. Now, sometimes you had the electricity was unreliable, generator was unreliable, so you had to light your candle or light your lantern and study. Now, this went on for two years. And I said, hmm, I need to change. At that time, my brother Big Joe was able to transfer me from that village school to a bigger school, Kumasi High School, that had, you know, they did both O level and A levels, and it was far bigger. And at that time, I said I needed to change, and yes, I changed. In fact, I became so serious with my studies. I would say I was obsessed with my studies. Wow. I was so obsessed because I wanted to become a doctor. Now, mm. Mm. The funny thing is, the more I continue to study, the more I got better. It reached a point that people actually were coming to me if they couldn't solve their math, you know, uh, you know, physics, you know, biology, chemistry. They had to come to me. I was the guy they come to. Of course, they didn't even know that I didn't pass the entrance examination <laughs> the first. <laughs> they didn't now, know. Fast forward, right? Fast forward. We wrote the O-level examination at the you know, five-year course, at the end of the five-year course, and I passed. Not did I just pass, I passed with get one distinction, graduating top of the class. I mean, I'm talking about someone, Tina, mm -hmm. who did not even pass the entrance examination in Amazing. the first place and barely made it you know, the second time, graduating uh -huh. top of the class. Fast forward two years later, A-levels, also graduating, you know, top of the class, you know, that enabled me to, you know, go to medical school. Now, I just want to point out, mm. all this why I believe and I saw in myself that I'm a doctor, or somehow, mm. I just believe. And I remember going to school, the village school, all right, somebody who did not pass entrance examination coming from a public school, all right, and mm -hmm. going to a village school, my brother, Big Joe, all right, he bought two, three books, story books for me. And in each one of them, he wrote Dr. Daniel Amwa. Wow. Now, you know, Napoleon said, leaders are dealers in hope. Yes. He gave me a hope, you know, he mm -hmm. gave me hope. And, mm -hmm. and, and, and it's amazing. And looking back, looking back, now that I'm studying all this, you know, self-development, I believe that what helped me was one, believe. Yeah. I believe strongly that I was going to be a doctor. Not only that, I also have that self-image. The self-image. Self -image. And now I come to understand, which we will talk about, that the self-image is actually the blueprint that we work with. Mm. And if you are able to do that, the German philosopher Goethe, he said, you have to be before you can do. Literally, you have to become the person who is capable of doing that. And yes. then the resources will come. And then the skills will come. All right? Mm -hmm. So that is my story. Yeah. I'm yes, um, currently here in Florida. But I just wanted to share with you um, that the belief is so important in all that we do. I think the Bible says that all things are possible for those who believe. And Jesus Absolutely. said, according to your belief, be, be done unto you. So with that belief, so I tell people, you got to believe that you can get better. You got to believe that you can be healthy. You got to believe that you can achieve the goals that you set for yourself. That is the first thing you have to, you know, decide. This is so awesome, Dr. Amor. This is just like a validation of something I read this morning as I was reading my, my Bible. You know, and um, it was talking about the man by the pool of Bethesda that Jesus passed by after all these years. Jesus asked him, do you want to be whole? Like, what question are you asking? He wants to be. More like, can you see yourself being whole? You know, 
And he had to bring him to that point. Instead of saying, okay, nobody's here to help me. Nobody's here to do this. Well, can you see yourself at that point of wholeness? And that really, I mean, changed something for me this morning. So hear me what you're saying about that self-image. And, you know, those of you who are on, on, on Facebook watching, that is where we are going to go today. Because I, I started to think, and I, I started to ask myself, can I see myself losing that way? Can I see myself whatever way I do way I want, can I see it? And that be, began to, you know, just turn things for me in a way that I haven't looked at in a while. So this is really a good segue into our conversation. Awesome, awesome. From not passing and choice exam to Dr. Amwa today. So where are you in your journey? Your journey may be, I feel so many times. I, I, I hear you, but Today, maybe this is your bridge, your bridge conversation from where you are to where you want to be. So let's listen in. So we're talking about the mind, the heart, and then our health. And this combination is not typical for when you go to your, your primary doctor. I, I mean, they, they, they're not talking to you about these type of things. So why, as a, a doctor, why is that important to you? What have you seen in your practice that makes you want to get your patients or get us as you know even people to be thinking when we look at our health our mind our heart and how that connects to our health why is that important that's a good question a good question uh, i think the bible says in proverbs 23 verse 7 that as he thinks in your heart so you are right mm -hmm. as a man thinks in his heart so is he so as you think and as you feel, your heart, we are talking about feeling, we're talking about emotion, right? Mm -hmm. So your thoughts and your feelings actually determine your personality, all right? Mm -hmm. We know for sure that the language of our mind is our thoughts and the language of our heart, of the body is feeling. And mm -hmm. these two make the personality. So, it is it's so important. So in everything in our head, it's our thought and our feeling that determines who we become. So when I started, all right, and as a physician, you start and you are taught to advise patients to lose weight, exercise, be smoking, and I continue to do it over and over. But I realized that, wait a minute, people are not changing. People are not changing. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> and we come in, we, we are even coming to see you. We can even try to not eat for a few days so we can make up the scale. But yes, yes, <laughs> yes, yes. People don't want to be weighed. All right. So it so happened that wait a minute, all that I was teaching was teaching people about strategy. Mm. The strategy is important. Don't get me wrong. All right. Good strategy will help you. But a strategy actually makes only five or 10% of what we want to achieve in life, in every area of our life. The rest is about mindset. The rest is spiritual, it's mental, it's emotional, it's psychological, all right? And therefore, I believe strongly that if we have to change, it has to come from within, mm -hmm. all right? Sometimes, you know, people want to change and they see this kind of exercise, they see this kind of program and they want to join, fine. But the question is, are you ready, all right? So I have seen patients that have gone to do bariatric surgery, gastric bypass, and they gain the weight back. Why? <laughs> because mentally they were not ready. So it is so important, all right? Now, the sad thing is, if the Bible says, Tina, Mm -hmm. That as you think in your heart, yeah. so are you. The schools that we attended, all right, how yeah. many times were we taught how to really think and how to really feel, mm -hmm. all right? Mm -hmm. Usually they don't teach that. So yeah. a lot of patients come to me now, they already know that they are supposed to lose weight. They already know they are supposed yes. to quit smoking, exercise, you know, sleep well, you, you mentioned it and yet you are not able to do it. Mm. And we are, so the question is, how do we bridge this gap between knowing and doing, right? Mm. This is the greatest gap in this world is knowing, you know, between knowing and doing. So, mm. and that is why it is important that we spend time at the mind. 
About now me. we know for sure that our mind and our feeling, all right, affect yes. our hormone production and that mm -hmm. can regulate or downregulate gene expression. Mm. So that is what we are saying that now if we have to change, let's spend more time changing from within. And as we change from within, it's how we see ourselves, who we think we are, all right, the images that we, you know, imagine, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. our self-talk, we need to change that. Without that, then change becomes temporary at best. Mm -hmm. mm. So change is coming from within. I think this is one of the things that we may have missed all along because we all know, like you said, we know what we should do but it's just not easy to do what you know. It's like, how do you take the knowing? I know I have to get myself to the gym. I know I have to, I, I, I have the third meal downstairs. I have to go and exercise. I know, I know, I know, but how from within? So I think that that, that is where, you know, why do we then set up these targets for ourselves and then we cannot achieve them? Is there anything that we can do that would practically move us from knowing and this is important because we talked about also knowing when we talk about finances a lot of us know we have to save but practically how do we save and so we got some tips there but here we are going to find out how do we get healthy we know some of us like i will own it the bread the rice it's not good for me but how do i change this you know yeah, so, so before we do that, we have to understand the mind, all right? Mm -hmm. Nobody has seen the mind. The mind is the working brain, all right? Yeah. Now, but the mind can be divided into two, the conscious and the subconscious. Mm. The conscious or the analytical mind or the objective mind. That mm. is the mind we use to decide. I need to exercise. I need to stop eating a lot of bread or rice, all right? Oh, yeah. And then the subconscious. The subconscious is the bigger portion of the mind. It wow. processes information over 40,000 times that of the conscious mind. Mm -hmm. That subjective mind or the subconscious, right, is the most important because that is where all our habits wow. are. That is where our self-image is. And that is responsible for the emotions that we generate in the body. Now, the conscious mind makes only about five to 10% of the mind. And the subconscious, almost 90 to 95%. So you can say that, all right, I'm gonna lose weight, I'm gonna exercise. That is the conscious mind. Beautiful, right? Yeah. Now, once you start, you realize that no, the challenge is that is not where the problem is. The problem is in the subconscious. So the question is, how do you change the subconscious? One. Mm -hmm. Do you remember 9-11? Yeah. Yes. yeah. Everybody who is old enough remember 9-11. And they remember exactly where they were when it happened. I remember I was in London when it happened. I remember the jeans I was wearing, the backpack I was coming from a library. I remember exactly in detail. Why? Because of the emotion mm. involved. All right? So anything that is attached to emotion, you are able to sink into the subconscious mind. And let me explain. We wow. said that we use our conscious mind to decide what we want. But if we have to change a habit, we have to change in the deeper subconscious mind, right? Mm -hmm. So for example, you said, I want to quit smoking or I want to exercise. Yeah. And then you find you know, something you want to do. You say, no, that is important, but that is not what's important. You have to write down why you want to lose weight or why you want to exercise or why you want this amount of money. And mm -hmm. write as many why. It's so important. Make it emotional, many, and gigantic. Yeah. You have to write as many reasons why and make it emotional. There is a saying that, if you have overwhelming why, the how will take care of itself. Absolutely. So I tell people, take time and write down as many why you want to lose weight. Now, on the other hand, you can also write, for instance, if it is health, you want to be healthy, you want to exercise, 
right on one side why you want this. All the benefits, All the benefits. that you will get if you lose mm -hmm. weight. On the other hand, write down all the problems that you can get if you don't lose weight. Wow. Why is this important? Throughout history, human beings, we are always influenced to seek pleasure or to avoid pain. In mm -hmm. everything we do, we can split it, all right? And mm -hmm. you can tell that we do it to seek pleasure or avoid pain. Yeah. Let's take work. Why do we work? All right. A lot of people work because they know that they are here to add value to what you know each other, all right, to serve others. So mm -hmm. they will even work even if you don't pay them. However, some people also have to work because if they don't work, they don't like the consequence. All right. I mean, even think about religion. It's mm -hmm. heaven or hell. Mm -hmm. That is what it is. Yeah. Wow. So we need to leverage. We need to leverage this. We need to write as many why we want this and then emotionalize it. And what you do is every day you read this. Every day you got to read it. Every day you read it. Every day you read it as many times as possible. When you do that, you are reprogramming what your mind. Right. And it's so important. There is another thing that you can also do. We know that repetition. Repetition. If you do something over and over and over again, it becomes a habit. Mm -hmm. All right? It mm -hmm. becomes a habit. Yeah. Now, how long does it take for a habit to form? According to University of London research, the average is 66 days. 66? I thought it was 21 all yes. along. <laughs> yes. A lot of people say 21, 30. That is the minimum. Oh. I so see. it depends on the habit that you want to change. It is what? an average of 66 days, all right? So we have to anticipate this. So that is one way of changing that which is in the subconscious mind. Another way is also we talk about you have to change the self-image, how you see yourself, who you think you are. I'm not talking about the image you see in the mirror. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about your self-conviction, who you really think you are. Wow. This is so important because nobody are perform his or her self image consistently. It never happens. So mm. the self image can be likened to the thermostat we have in our home. Yeah. Put the thermostat to say 74, all right? And guess what happens? If it heats to 76, the air condition kicks in, all right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then it breaks it down. Yeah. If it gets cooler, the heater kicks in and it brings it back to 74. Mm -hmm. Our self image literally is like that. Mm. In the 1960s, Maxwell Morse um, wrote a book called Psycho Cybernetics. Yeah. Maxwell Morse was one of the very famous you know, um, plastic surgeons. And he actually coined the term self image. Mm. What he found out was a lot of people came to him for plastic surgery. And he changed their lips, their nose, their ears. Everybody thinks, you know, he did a beautiful job. But a lot of people, they still thought they were ugly. No really? matter what he did. So he realized that, wait a minute, there's this image that I'm dealing with, but these clients have their own self image, how they see themselves. Yeah. So nobody, the self image is sort is the blueprint we work with. The question is, how do you change the self image? Yeah. You change the self image by imagining the new you. Imagine the new you. Yes. So imagination, as we know, is one of the higher faculties of the mind. Albert Einstein, he said, it's more important than knowledge. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, imagination is more important than knowledge, all right? It is a powerful tool most of the time. Of course, we use it to our own disadvantage. A lot of people talk about fear, anxiety. It's all imagination at work, all right? Mm -hmm. It haven't happened yet, all right? Mm -hmm. So how do you do that? So this is when you sit down and you ask yourself, for example, if I have lost 20 pounds, how will it feel like? 
Mm. And then you begin to imagine the new you. Now, as you imagine the new you, that is important, but most importantly, you have to feel it as if it is already happened. Wow. The philosophers call this living from the end. Hmm. Because acceptance of the end, you know, actually was the means to the end. You literally have to become the person who is capable of doing those things. Don't be worried about how you're going to get there. You got to leave it to God. I think Mark chapter 11, 23, Jesus said that um, whatsoever thing you ask when you pray, believe that mm -hmm. you have already heard to receive it. So mm -hmm. it's not it's not it's not about how you pray, it's how you what you say, but how you prepare yourself to receive that which you mm -hmm. pray for, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, now, th this is important. This is important. You have to literally see yourself in your mindset. Initially, it may be a little bit fuzzy, all right, but mm -hmm. it's okay. You gotta persist in that in the evening before you go to bed, in the morning when you wake up. Why is it important? Because in the morning and in the evening, when you are going to bed, all right, yeah. most of the time, your brain waves actually settle down, right? Mm. The brain waves go into what we call the alpha states. At that time, it's been shown that you are able to impress the subconscious mind better yeah. than any time, all right? So you have to see yourself. And also, you have to embody the feelings that will be yours if you have already achieved that which you want. Mm. You literally, you know, most of the time we talk about people, are, you know, about the strategy, how I'm going to get there. Don't ask how, but literally, you have to live from that end as if it is already happening. And then you meet the coaches, all right? God will bring all the strategy to you. But you have to see yourself as if you already have it. Then you have it. Amazing. Amazing. Look, the Bible is so true. Oh, yes. Everything yes. that you said is like, you know, yep. he, said, he told Abraham that I've made you a father of many nations. Before yes. Homi believed, yes. he didn't even see it yet. But against yes. hope, he believed and yes. he just imagined it. And he yes. saw it. And yes. he saw it actually in the physical later, years yes. and years after. It's yes. so amazing. I mean. Amazing. Amazing. And, and in the Bible somewhere, it said that he who has, more is given unto him. Yeah. What is the meaning? To me, that is the meaning. If you believe you have it, then you have it. All right? Hope is evidence of things unseen. Wow. So far too often, we focus on the how. The moment you bring how, guess what? You are bringing obstacles and obstacles and obstacles. No, don't be concerned about the how. It's important, but the most important is why. And if you can teach your body emotionally to embrace that feeling before that happens. And by the way, what is the ultimate human experience? It's feelings. Yeah. Why do we want anything in life? The mm -hmm. reason is the fact that we believe that we will receive or derive this feeling when we get it. That is why mm -hmm. we want it. Mm -hmm. But if you can go and live that, truly, I, 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 I believe that this is one of the most important things that I've learned. And by the way, this is not only about health, about your career, about mm -hmm. your business, whatever you want to do, literally, mm -hmm. you have to live from the end and feel as if it is already happening. So oh. Winston Churchill, right? Mm -hmm. He once said, the mood decides the fortunes of people. Right under the fortune, decide the mood. When people feel good, your feeling, remember the Bible says, as you think in your heart, so you are, right? Mm -hmm. The heart is your feeling. So feeling is so important. It's more important than the fact, actually. Wow. I, I, I mean, it's just, it's, just, it's just so true that, like Sarah is saying, the law of faith, 
how much we, we have what even we need. We have everything we need in the Bible right there for our health, for our finances, and everything is a law that when we work with, it works for us. And a lot of times we don't engage that law to help us. So now I'm going to shift gears a bit and ask you about some of, some of the um, underlining conditions that seem to run sometimes in a family. Is that also a mindset thing? Because it could be that a family will have diabetes, let's say. It runs through all the generations. The mother had it, the children have it. And can we reprogram our minds to be the ones that in our time, this diabetes thing is not gonna happen. We're gonna, we're gonna shift it so that we can have a different breed, especially as Christians, we can you know, take a different turn and go into good health and well-being for the rest of you know, our lives. Yeah. Yes, yes. In fact, uh, research, remember years ago, we started understanding biology, right? Mm -hmm. We started understanding genetics. And the idea initially was that every disease was transmitted, you know, through genetics. That was the idea. But yeah. then we realized that, wait a minute, they had two identical twins. Mm. One grew to be 80, the other one 40, 50, they get cancer. What happened? Later on, we came to understand that, wait a minute, the environment is actually more important than the genes. All right? Wow. So we found out that, of all the diseases, about 1% is directly transmitted by genes, like really? sickle cell anemia, right? And certain genetic, rare genetic condition. Most of the time, you may have the gene, but whether you're going to express it or not, it's determined by the environment. What you do, what you eat, your lifestyle, all right? The stresses in life. This is so important, right? Wow. So later on, then we realize that, wait a minute, the environment is important. So I used to say that, you know, there was a saying that genetics lost the gun and the environment pulls the trigger, mm. right? So the fact that you have a genetic, you know, predisposition does not mean you are going to go ahead and develop that condition. Amen to you, that. Usually one gene, can mm. go so many ways. Sometimes one gene can cause for the synthesis of almost 20 different proteins. Wow. Whether it goes here or here depends on the environment. But later on, they also find that the environment is important. However, you can also have identical twins living in the same environment, the same lifestyle. However, one will grow to be healthy, the mm. other one will have all diseases. And then we came to understand that, wait a minute, our thoughts is also very important. Mm. And our feeling. So now it's a fact that our thoughts, actually, stress can produce hormones. And these hormones affect how the genes express themselves. Amazing. In much the same way, our thoughts, all right, can hurt, make us healthy. It Our depends. thoughts can make us healthy. Yes. Again, it goes back to what the Bible says, as you think in your heart, so you become. It didn't say as you eat and as your conditions are, as your parents are, all right, so you no. become. No, as yes. you think and as you feel, so you become. Wow. All right. So let me share with you the new findings, you know. Um, for example, there is something called telomeres. Mm. Now, telomeres, when you have a string of DNA or the chromosome, mm -hmm. at the end, we have the telomeres. It can be likened to your shoelace. You know, we have this rubber tips at the end of the shoelace. Mm. Now, this prevents the shoelace from unraveling. In mm. the same way, the telomeres prevent the, what, the chromosomes from unraveling. Okay. Now, when you were formed, you know, I don't know if you remember the day of conception, all right? <laughs> when you were formed, <laughs> by the way, you know, you were just one cell lay, one cell, and then it divides. As we age, the cell divides. Now, mm. as it divides, new telomeres are formed. However, the length of the telomeres gradually decreases. 
Okay. They found out that there is a direct correlation between the length of telomeres and our health. For example, those who have short telomeres, they are at risk for developing Alzheimer's disease, a heart disease, diabetes, cancer, you mentioned it. Really? For us, those with long telomeres actually live longer. Mm. Now there's a lady, Barbara Blackburn at UCLA, University of California, LA. She won a Nobel Prix Prize you know, for that, for the work that she did. She discovered the telomerase, the enzyme that is responsible for elongating or synthesizing this telomeres. Mm. Now, this is what they find out. For example, those who are really, really stressful in life, I'm talking about those taking care of Alzheimer's disease or mm -hmm. those who have children with autism, these people are really under stress. Guess what? Most of them have short telomeres. Really? All right. So what they did was they found out people, you know, volunteers, and they said, okay, let's do some intervention here, lifestyle changes, and see if it can lengthen the telomeres. So what did they do? Exercise, walking 20 to 30 minutes, you know, a day, moderate mm -hmm. exercise, eating plant-based diet, um, especially low fat, you know, whole food diet. Right. They also let them get, you know, uh, stress reduction techniques like meditation or yoga, and also um, societal support, uh, intimacy and love. Guess what they find out? Mm. In a short period, their telomeres increased by 10%. Those, you know, um, who didn't do anything, it decreased by 3%. So what we are saying is that actually our thought, exercise, lifestyle changes actually increase telomeres. Now, this is most important. Another one, the enzyme called telomerase. The more you have, the better, because they're going to help you to produce, you know, longer telomeres. Mm. What they found out is that when volunteers were made to stand in front of unfriendly audience to give speech, guess what? Their telomeres level actually went down. Oh. When they begin to meditate, it goes up. All right. Again, this is going to show that stress, all right, and mm -hmm. for that matter, lifestyle affect our health more than anything. So I tell people, instead of spending your time and worrying about what your parents have and not, do not have, right, you have to focus on what you can do. Now the challenge is most of the time, the same food that the parents ate, the same lifestyle, they pass it on to their offspring, all right? <laughs> so they end up manifesting the same disease. Yeah. That one, I think we are going to go there because I think that a lot of people are trying to change our eating, you know, but you realize how it's so hard to even change the, the, your tongue. But one time, you know, I had this experience with one of our, our, um, our church members and I remember he really loved Chinese food and he got really sick, got admitted and when he was in the hospital, he, you know how they give you hospital food, like these uh, jello and all these things. So when we went there one time, he said, you know, it's not even bad at all. You can even eat some of these uh, hospital food and be okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, we don't need to get to the hospital stage to begin to change our diet, right? So how do we start shifting you know, some of the things that we've done that are not helping us, you know, as, as, especially as minorities. And we have more of the issues. Next week, we'll be talking about women's health. We're talking about fibroids and all that. But I mean, just general <laughs> health. How do we start shifting? We don't eat fruits. Even for those in America who have access to some of these healthy choices, we still end up maybe is still subconscious <laughs> we still go back to our fufu which is good but i mean you cannot eat it as much as you used to eat it in the past let's talk about that yes so um we have to bear in mind that we are all programmed yeah right intentionally or unintentionally consciously or unconsciously we are all programmed so i tell people 
again, Ashley said, a lot of people know what they are supposed to do, yeah. but they don't do it. Is it lack of said discipline? Not really. A lot of people are actually disciplined. Mm. Now, the challenge is far too often, we want to do so many things, right? So anytime, let's be talking about habits here. Habits. When you start something, you want to make it a habit. Why? Because let's say you want to exercise. Mm -hmm. Initially, when you start, you are using your willpower. Okay. However, your willpower or self-discipline is limited. It's like your cell phone. You get up in the morning and it's fully charged, but during the day, the power just drains. That is what it is. Yeah. So we have to use our heart, willpower strategically, use it to form a habit and let it hot go. For mm -hmm. example, Tina, I don't know about you. When you wake up and you wear your shoes, which leg do you put in first? I think I do the right. I don't even remember. Okay, all right. <laughs> you see, you have to leave it very good. But the chances are, if you use putting the right first, you always do the right. You mm -hmm. always, why? Because it has become a habit. Yeah. The brain wants to save effort. You don't get up in the morning and negotiate with yourself, should I put in the right leg or the left leg first? No, it has become a habit. So you don't expend energy doing that. Mm. So to tell people, what you want to do is we have to use our willpower strategically. Find us one habit that you want to install, you want to reprogram, right? Mm -hmm. Now in habit formation, Charles Dewey wrote a book, did a research, wrote a book called The Power of Habit. Yeah. Now, what happened is in habit formation, we say it takes some time, mm -hmm. all right? So you have to choose one habit, what we call keystone habit, mm. and then focus on that. There are a few keystone habits. That is one habit that affects all other habits. Yes. Yeah. For example, exercise is a keystone habit because when you have an arch, you know, you have the keystone that holds everything together. Yeah. Once people begin to exercise, for example, they begin to be mindful of their food, they are yeah. mindful of their credit card, research have shown, amazingly, all right? Yeah, meditation, for example, is a keystone habit. Why? Because you be mindful of your thought and what is going on, what you eat. So what you do is, we also tell people, make it so simple and so easy that you don't fail. Right. What do you do? If you are going to exercise, the research shows that it's better to exercise every day than to do it every other day. Mm. And if you are going, it could be 10 minutes, all right? A lot yeah. of people, if you ask them, can you do burpees or can you do you know, push up or can you do something for 10 minutes? They will say yes. Yeah. So focus on that. Do it over and over and over again until it becomes a habit. Once it becomes a habit, you don't negotiate with yourself. You just get up and do it. So we see a lot of people getting up in the morning and they are running. And a lot of people say, wow, this guy is very disciplined. It's yeah. not disciplined at that time. It has become a habit. It's unconscious. They just do it. Now, the other thing we also buy, bear in mind, we mentioned 21, 30 days. Let's say it takes 30 days for a habit. Mm. You have to embrace the process. Yeah. You have to remember that the first 10 days, we call it the unbearable phase, right? Mm -hmm. That is why a lot of people say, this is not for me. I can't do it <laughs> in this talk, all right? But if you continue the second 10 days, we call it uncomfortable. Yes, you might even begin to get some benefit, but you still have to negotiate with yourself every day in order to do it. But the next 10 days, we call it unstoppable. At that time, the habit begins to form. And now research have shown that every habit actually neurologically, you have connection for that. Your wow. brain has begun to actually rewire for that habit. Right. So I tell people, you can't do three or four, you try to change at the same time. Usually a lot of people, it's not easy. You set yourself for failure, all right? Yeah. And also you gotta treat yourself with compassion. Mm -hmm. In other words, if you fail, you get up. Somebody say, I'm never down. I'm, I'm up or I'm getting up, all right? So yeah. Yeah. You, you, don't, you, you don't have to, because the change is not a straight line. 
Sometimes yeah. two steps forward, you know, one step back, two, you know, steps forward, one step back. So we got to bear in mind, choose a habit, something that you can make it, it could be three, four months, and therefore you don't even get up and think about it. And then you go on to the next habit. Amazing, amazing. I'm going to share one of my workout uh, apps with everyone. It's a seven minute work, workout. Initially, when I said I'm like seven minutes, I can do seven minutes because I've been struggling to go to the gym and I, yeah, I won't go and I won't go. Seven minutes. Yes. Now I don't think about it. The seven minutes comes and then I do another one and another yes. one and another one. And then I stay there for 30 minutes. But it started with just making it easy for myself. Seven minutes. I'm like, yeah, seven minutes is doable. So I think that is a really key thing to our success. Taking that, you know, one thing, that keystone that we need to change that will trickle down and work on everything. Hi, Melissa. And she says, I'm, I'm never down. I'm either getting up or I'm up. It's amazing. Wow. It's, it's, just, it's just interesting how, you know, all these things tie together and how we can, we can form some of these habits that we struggle with. You know, in, as we are getting closer to that time, if you have questions, please feel free to post it and we can ask um, Dr. Amwa to um, elaborate or, you know, ask any questions that you have. But I think you mentioned something, and I think in, it's something that I want to go back to, the practical steps for stress reduction. So I have a lot of uh, people in our community, in the Blacks, um, among Black minorities, we have a lot of high blood pressure, right? Diabetes, high blood pressure, those, you know, are pretty common. But high blood pressure especially. Is that something that, I mean, apart from, I know some people would say salt, um, but I think stress also adds up to it a lot. So yes. how is that? I mean, if you can take a few of the common ones that you typically would see and give us some practical tips around them, I think that would be awesome. So stress, you know, as you and I know, affect everything negatively, all right? Your relationship with your spouse, your relationship with your children, you know, your work, stress can affect everything. And we have to take, you know, maybe a minute or so to understand stress. Stress is important to us. Why? Because it helps us to avoid danger, run away, all right? You know, those times, you know, if, you know, a lion is coming, you have to develop some, have some stress response. So, so it's, a, it's an adaptive, you know, you know, mechanism that we all have in us. So nobody can run away. The question is, how do we, you know, reduce stress? Now, human beings, our prefrontal cortex, the front of the brain, which is almost 40% of the size of the brain, all right? Mm -hmm. We don't have to wait to see a lion to turn on this stress response. Now, a lot of people can turn on this the moment they see their mother or father-in-law, all right? <laughs> they, can, they can turn on the stress response the moment they see their ex, all right? That is human beings. It's amazing, but we know that stress causes release of cortisol, adrenaline, stress hormone. It will cause your blood sugar to go up, your blood pressure, palpitation, sleepless night. You mention it, it's going to affect you. Your asthma, your heart, everything stress. So the question is, how do we reduce stress? One, mm -hmm. William James, considered the father of American psychology, once said that our, he said our greatest weapon all right, against stress is our ability to change one thought, you know, um, you know um, with another thought. That is the ability. Don't try and go try to wait until you resolve every problem, right, before you know. No. For example, talking about forgiveness, I've seen a lot of people, they are so stressful. Why? Because they can't forgive their mother, father, friends, somebody who yeah. disappointed them, all right? It's amazing, and we should remember, the Bible says that if you don't forgive, my heavenly father will not forgive you. So I tell people, by forgiving, you are not condoning what the person did you know, to you. By not forgiving, you are not punishing the person, all right? And by forgiving, you are not inviting the person to come and what, and hurt you again. Yeah. Forgiveness is a selfish act. You need it more than the other person needs it. Yes. So I see it all the time. I said, the earlier you forgive, the better. 
It's amazing. So forgiveness is a big you know, thing. The other thing also is that to reduce stress, I think we have to really come to understand who we are mm. and who we are not. Mm. We have to understand that. I believe strongly that once we understand who we really are, yeah. actually our stress goes down. Sure. For instance, a lot of people think that they are what other people think about them, but we are not. We are not our accomplishment. We are not our past. No. We are not our success. No. All right? In fact, we are not even our body. Mm. This is important. And we are not our feeling. And we are not even our mind. Right. You know, the Bible says that God is his spirit. Those who worship him might worship him in the spirit and in truth. And the mm. Bible also says that God created us in his own image. Right. And therefore... We can say that we are spirit. We are just having this earthly experience. That is who we really are. But I want to spend a little time because stress is a mental thing, right? Yes. It is coming from our mind. It's coming from our thoughts. Now, the question is, are we our thoughts? No, we are not our mind. We are the ones that are aware of our thoughts. So you think all the time, Tina, mm -hmm. and you probably talk to yourself as I talk to myself. Right. The question is, when you are talking to yourself, who is talking and who is listening? Mm. When, you, when you think, when you are thinking, who is thinking and who is aware that you are thinking? Wow. The ratio, the spirit or consciousness, if you want to put it that way, is the one that is actually aware that you are thinking. You are not your thought. This is important. Wow. We get confused. Wow. We, we are here. Our thought is just a tool that we use. Now, the challenge is a lot of people get so identified with their thought. And therefore, every thought that comes into their mind affects them. Where is the thought therefore coming from? It's mm. coming from the mind. Most of the time, it's negative. We call it ant, automatic negative thoughts. And it's normal. What about this? What about this? What about this? What about this? It's okay. Your job, my job, is to separate ourselves from our thoughts. How do you do that? Mm. You do that by observing your thought without judgment. So you see your thoughts as a stream of river. Just don't jump in. Because the moment you jump in and you identify with it, it will suck you in, and then you become what you think about. Now, mm -hmm. this is interesting. If you do that, you will find out that the same thought you had yesterday, that you couldn't sleep, that you, you could have the same thought today, and it's not affecting you. Because remember, every thought elicits feelings in you mm -hmm. by producing neuropeptides. That is when you believe in that. But if you are not believing in that, then it's not affecting you. So we should remind ourselves that we should not allow our thought to drive us crazy, as a lot of people say. Amazing, amazing. Now, well, th th this is important. Yeah, this is important that we have to really bear in mind that when people are stressed, I ask them, what are you stressed about? Usually, it's not what has happened. It's how they perceive it and the meaning they give it to it and the story they attach to it. And the, you get what I mean? Yes. That is the problem. That is the it's problem. The which has happened. Mm. So we should not please listen to our thought. Most of the time, it's not true. It's negative. It's repetitive. It doesn't serve us any good. I like it. I think this is so deep. You have to almost like sit down and, and think about some of these things. Because, I mean, I think this week something happened. I, I just, I, you know, something, all these thoughts started coming back. And I, I, I just found myself also answering back some of the thoughts like, I mean, this is not true or this, you know. And then that scripture that says in Philippians 4, 8, whatsoever things are true. It's like pick and choose right? The thoughts are going to come. They're going to keep flowing. Like you said, it's like a river. It's, it, it keeps flowing every time. Yes. Even sometimes when you don't want to do it, it's, it's yes. coming. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and sometimes some people, Tina, some people want to stop it. You can't stop these negative thoughts. You can't stop all of them. It's okay. They are there to protect you. 
Mm. Your job is not to identify with it and believe it. No, it's not true. Let it come, let it go. Let it come and let it go. Because the moment you begin to resist it and you begin to go around and you begin to, you see, you are just wasting time. It will keep on over and over and over again. Amazing, amazing. Whatever things are true, whatever things of a good report, if there's any virtue, if you want any way to reduce your stress, if there's any way to become healthy, think about these things. Think yes. about your the new you, the new, you know, you in all the beauty that you want. Think about this. It's time to stop thinking about all these things that are not true and focus on what is true. Yes. So as we end, I see all the comments. I'm, I'm so excited. I think I have to take some time myself and also just go think about my thoughts. <laughs> think about what you're thinking about, you know? Yeah, and, and make sure that the images that you have in your mind are really images that you would like to see if they came to pass, right? Make sure that your self-image, who you really are, you are not your thoughts, you are not your feelings, you are not, you are, who God says you are. It's very different from all the noise around us. So we are so we are so blessed to have this conversation. Um, Dr. Thank Amas, you. we end up, I mean, what are some of your, your final words to us? We want you to come back. We will definitely yeah, want you sure. to come let, back. Let, let me share with you two uh, techniques that you, know, uh, you can share with somebody or you yourself when you are stressed, you are worried. The first one is called the freeze frame technique. What you do, is you have to ask yourself, what am I worried about? What am or, I worried about? Or first, you have to know, you know, the free stream technique. First, you have to understand what are you going to. Maybe I'm stressed out, I'm not happy, I'm not, you know, I'm angry. Whatever feeling you are going to recognize that. Two, so, take some deep breaths, all right? You can take five inhalation, you know, for five seconds. And then, out. Five seconds into your nose, out, and then you can focus on your heart, all right, as you do that. Remember, the conscious mind can have many thoughts, almost 60,000 to 70,000 thoughts in a, in, a, in, a, in a day. Every minute you have so many thoughts, but it can focus on only one thought at a time mm. at the moment. So you focus on the heart, then you forgot about everything. As you do this, remember, when we are under stress, the adrenaline goes high. Cortisol goes high, palpitation, blood flow to the brain, the prefrontal cortex actually goes back to the back of the brain and also to the rest of the body, all right? The muscles preparing us to fight or run away. So somebody can be confused. They cannot even read the same thing, you know, something they've written themselves. Yeah. So yeah. as you do that, you are bringing these sympathetic nervous system stimulation down and it relaxes you. And this is science. Now, after you've done that, you ask yourself, what is it that, that I'm grateful for right now? Hmm. What is it that I'm thankful for? And sincerely focus on that. If you cannot think of anything you are grateful for, look back in your life and ask, what event, what is it that I was so grateful for? What happened? Maybe it could have been the day that you said yes, it could have been the wedding day or the day you had your first day, whatever it was that you were so grateful for, go back and relive that event. Now, this is what happens. Gratitude is amazing. There are two emotions, Tina, that affect mm -hmm. all of us more than any other in, you know, more, uh, emotion, and that is fear and anger. Right. But we cannot be grateful and angry simultaneously. No. And we can be grateful and fearful simultaneously. The research shows that it takes about 15 seconds on average for gratitude to affect how you feel. It's amazing. Now, after that, so the first one is recognize how you feel. The second one is to do some deep breathing. And the third one is express gratitude. The fourth one is you ask yourself, what should I do about this? Now, this is the interesting part. At that point, the answers that you come up with tend to actually to better, better one, right? When you are crazy, we are all stressed, so you got to be careful. Otherwise, you look like, ah, 
Why did I do this? Why did I say, how, why did I send this email, right? Because yeah. we're not thinking right. So you want to settle down and then you give a response. So it's amazing, all right? Now, the other one that I want to share with you quickly is called worry buster or disaster report. Let's mm. say you are worried about something. First, you have to write down specifically what you are worried about. Two, mm. you have to determine the worst case scenario because that is what we are afraid of most. Yeah. Three, you have to accept the worst case scenario. You say, Lord, I don't want it. But if this were to happen, let your will be done. Mm. And four, you have to write down all the things you can do to prevent the worst case scenario from happening and take immediate action. Now, let's go back to the worst case scenario. The moment you accept the worst case scenario, the fear begins to go away like that. Why? Because most of the time, we don't want anything to, we don't want to hear anything about this worst case, worst case scenario. Mm -hmm. It could be losing your job, it could be death, whatever it is, we don't want it. And that resistance is what keeps bringing the stress and the world we are so afraid. It may not happen, but yeah. we are so, so worried. But the moment you say, if I lose the job, it may not be the end of it all. If I, I lose this, it may not be the end of life. Guess what? Yes, you're going to pray and you're going to work to prevent that from happening. But the moment you accept this worst case scenario, most of the fear begins to wipe away like that. Mm -hmm. And then you use the energy. You see, we tell people, you got to use 90% of your energy finding solution, not worrying about a problem. Wow. So you then use the energy and focus mm -hmm. on all that you can do to prevent the worst case scenario from happening or making it better. Amazing. I, I didn't get the first one, the freeze. And um, what was the first the one? The second one, the, the freeze frame technique. The freeze film technique. So the US military, the FBI, they all use the freeze film uh, technique. Just relax before you make a decision or you do it. And the second one is the worry buster. I love it. I love it. I know we couldn't we, we couldn't go on and on and on, but I think there's just so much we can tap from Dr. Amo, as you can see. So I mean, I have a lot of people saying you should come back again. Um, we are looking at doing mental health in a few months. We have to tap you to come again and just talk to us again about how, again, because it's taking us a while to build this and program our minds to this level. And it will take us a while to deprogram and then set ourselves up to win. Hello, thanks for watching. I hope you learned something that will help you today in your life journey. Make sure to subscribe, like, share, and come back for more videos to encourage you to become a masterpiece. See you soon.